Here's a city near the west coast of Saudi Arabia across the Red Sea from Sudan. And the name of that city is Mecca. Five times every day, no matter where in the world they are, devout Muslims face in the direction of Mecca to say their prayers. More than five million of those Muslims live among us here in the United States. More American Muslims than Jews. Throughout the world, there are more Muslims than Roman Catholics. And if you were inclined to believe that most Muslims are Arabs, you would be wrong. By far the largest number of Muslims come from outside the Middle East. Over 150 million from Indonesia alone. At least once in his or her lifetime, every Muslim is expected to make the pilgrimage or Hajj to Mecca. This is the time of year, between the seventh and twelfth days of the last month of the Islamic year, when the Hajj is made. Usually, somewhere in the neighborhood of two million Muslims come to Mecca each year at this time. And the Saudi government routinely makes pictures of the Hajj available around the world. But for an American reporter to have access to Mecca and the Hajj, he would need to be a Muslim. Which is why we turn to Michael Wolf to take us where no non-Muslim has ever been. Islam means acknowledging the oneness of God, surrendering to it, cooperating with the way things are. I'm a Muslim. I revere the same God as my Christian mother and my Jewish father. Allah is simply the Arabic word for the God of Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. I find the absence of priests and rabbis attractive. Being a Muslim, God is as near as the veins in my neck. This directness is most apparent on the pilgrimage. You embrace your religion, you take part in a spiritual drama, very public and very personal all at once. The Hajj begins at one of five stations specified by the Prophet Muhammad. Here we enter the state of ritual purity called Iram. For men, the required dress of the Hajj is two unstitched lengths of white cotton cloth and a pair of sandals. Women traditionally wear plain forms of their usual dress. The garments are a symbol. The person who wears them agrees not to harm plants and animals or fellow pilgrims. No arguments, no violence. We agree to keep the peace. The garments are a great leveler, too. Who can tell rich from poor? They're hard to get used to at first because, in a way, they put an end to my everyday identity. I set aside what I thought made me special, my roots as an American, my work as a writer, my worries, aspirations, or my plans. Here I join people from all over the earth. All these human beings drawn at the same time simply by the call of an idea, by the oneness of God. Pilgrims recite a special set of verses, announcing their readiness to serve God. Here I am, Lord, at your service. Here I am. You have no equal. I am here. Truly, the praise and the favor are yours and the kingdom. You have no equal. As we all approach Mecca, that long-imagined city, there is a little uncertainty. What will it really be like? Will I perform the Hajj without error? Will it be acceptable to God? To preserve its sanctity and protect pilgrims, the sacred territory around Mecca is forbidden to all but Muslims. It lies hidden in the mountains 50 miles from the Red Sea, a modern city of 1.2 million people. Oh, there's the minaret. This is the center of the Muslim world. There are people from everywhere. I'm from Nigeria. From Islamabad. From Egypt. Indonesia. Morocco. From Palestine. China. Bangladesh. Japan. And the United States. I meet a group of American servicemen, Muslims, many of them veterans of the Gulf War six years ago. Here in Mecca, that conflict seems so distant. Islam showed me that, uh, all mankind could be together. I mean, so when I see another brother, as soon as I meet these brothers on the way, I, I love them at first for the sake of Allah. This is something that America could learn uh, from, from this situation, from this uh, religious experience, that all of mankind can uh, get along. We have left daily life behind and come to a place hardly belonging to this world, a place filled by the almost tangible presence of God. 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. All their lives in mosques around the world, Muslims have formed into straight rows to face the Kaaba. Now and only in Mecca, these prayer lines become circular. سمي الله نيمان حميدا. ربنا. This is the sacred Kaaba, the house of God first built by Abraham. It is the symbol of God's oneness. The verses embroidered in gold are from the Quran. Behold, the first temple ever set up for mankind, rich in blessings, a source of guidance for the world, full of clear messages. And anyone who comes here finds inner peace. I feel like I see all my brothers in rainbow colors but they are all Muslims, mm -hmm. and I'm proud to see them, mm -hmm. and I stand shoulder to shoulder with them. In the year 610, on the tallest mountain above Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad received the first verses of the Quran. By the time of the Prophet's death, Islam reached well beyond Mecca into the greater Middle East. A vast majority of the world's Muslims, 80%, now live outside the Middle East. There are more than five million in the U.S. Walking around the block in Mecca is a walk around the world. I step out the door and for 15 yards I'm in Indonesia. Down the street past a couple of stores and it's Africa. Pakistan is just around the corner. Look, here's Bangladesh. Where I live, most people think of prayer as a private affair reserved for the bedside, the graveside, the Sunday service. For a Muslim, when the hour arrives, the whole world turns into a mosque, including this crowded market. We hear the call and lay out our carpets. I borrow one from a bookstore owner. When the prayer ends a few minutes later, people fold their carpets and continue on their way. In Mecca, the formal rites of the pilgrimage begin in the great mosque. The first obligation is to circle seven times around the Kaaba, following the direction of the earth around the sun. We surround the foundations of our religion. This is a form of prayer, an expression of our desire to put God at the center of our lives. Each circuit begins and ends at the black stone, the symbolic cornerstone of Islam, the only remnant of Abraham's original building. After seven circuits, I go downstairs to drink from the Zamzam well. Without the water from this well, Mecca could never have existed. In the second obligation, we reenact an ancient family drama, the story of a mother and son abandoned in a desert. Here, Hagar ran seven times back and forth between the hills of Safa and Marwa in a desperate search for water. Finally, the Zamzam well was revealed to her by God. The story dramatizes God's compassion for those in need, a reminder never to give up hope to keep moving in the direction of salvation. There are some two million of us here. So many of us have come from so far away, all sharing in one purpose, all offering our pilgrimage to God, 